What's up social media? It's your favorite blogger and only crazy coach Tony and I am here with the first episode of season two with Controlling Your Crazy. Listen, I promised I was bringing you the heat, the fire, the questions that you want answered. Don't forget, you can find each and every episode on IGTV and YouTube. So without further ado, I just want to introduce our non-existent boyfriends on the panel. Yes, we are introducing the men. I'm going to start with my first non-existent boyfriend, Adrian. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for coming. We have Mr. G.S. here. Yes, thank you. And you see he gave his alias, right? We don't know his real name, but that's fine. He's a non-existent boyfriend. And then we have Curtis. Hey everybody, how y'all doing this evening? Ooh, Barry White. All right, listen, I know you guys all know about what it means to be crazy, what it means to be controlled, and we've asked all of those questions last season. We talked to the men, and we talked to some of the single women about what drives them crazy and the stories that non-existent boyfriend have, but this time, we want to dig deep. We want to go inside of the men's minds, right? Find out what's bothering them emotionally to cause you single ladies to go crazy. And I'm going to start right here in the center with Mr. GS. So let me ask you, straight up, no holes bar, do you think it's realistic for men to be faithful? Because I get the question all the time from the ladies. So I want to start from like the root. Can men be faithful? Yes. Really? Divulge, please. It, it depends on the, the man. I mean, mo most men, when you find a woman that you truly love, mm -hmm. you're going to give her everything. Okay. You're going to believe in her. She's going to believe in you. You're not going to do anything to jeopardize that, especially losing her. Because mm. once you lose her, then you back where you started at. So, yeah, I believe, Great definitely point. believe men can be favored. That's why a lot of men are married. Oh, oh well, we know married men cheat now. Ah, it depends on what's going on in the marriage. Oh. Great point. And you hear that, ladies, right? So when you're dating a guy, newly or casually dating your non existent boyfriend, it is realistic for him to be faithful. All right, this is for any one of you men on the panel. Talk about some of the emotional baggage that you think men carry that affects their dating lives, because it can't be all the women. What do you think you guys are bringing to the table emotionally that kind of drive us crazy? <laughs> all right, we'll put it up, put it on Curtis. Uh, yeah, all right, so I think one of uh, probably the, the most popular thing that uh, men bring to the table is when they feel that they lack the finances. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, um, unfortunately, um, our society has groomed our men to um, associate their value or their worth with. Uh, how many zeros come behind that first comma in, uh, in the mm -hmm. menu? Mm -hmm. That yeah. might explain a question I got further down the line, right. but continue. Yeah, so as a result, <laughs> lots of men, um, they feel that if they don't have that, that that is their only value to the woman. Right. So oh. they don't take care of her, and, and they don't take care of all of her. Gotcha. And I can't provide, so I am incapable of loving you and being patient with you, being understanding, being supportive of you. Mm. All of those things start to suffer because his money is not right. And, wow. And the problem with that is when you take away, you know, so many women say how they're independent, they're so independent, they don't need a man for this and they even have that. If you already taken away mm -hmm. what he's supposed to do, then you feel like he has no purpose in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So okay. now he's already against, his back is against the wall. My woman don't need me. Where do I stand? I can't be a provider. She don't need me. Mm, wow, and we know, ladies, we struggle, and I'm going to get to that in a few minutes, we struggle with our non-existent boyfriends taking us out. I don't want to get too deep yet because I'm going to address that, but you see, men come with emotional baggage that you know nothing about. So while you think, you know, he's a loser or he's just another guy, he has something that he's bringing to the table as well as you. So when you put those two together, the whole situation just gets crazy. All right. Oh, you want to chime yeah, in? Yeah. Yes. I want to chime ahead. on that. Men, men also have their insecurities as well. Mm, okay. And it's not an insecurity that only stems from their ability to provide, okay, which is a very narrow sighted vision of how to even define a man or of what a man's role is. Okay. 
But you also have a man who has grown up through childhood, having various experiences with whomever from wherever, including their parents, their school friends, whether they've been bullied, whether there are mm. things that they've had to endure in, in, in the process. You now have a man who's reached a, a young adulthood or adulthood who has issues that they are also working on. Mm. The difference is we have a society that has given women a green light to emote. Meanwhile, we've told men that part of the definition of being masculine or being man is that you can't emote. You're not supposed mm -hmm. to show feelings. So he, the moment he begins to show feelings, we, we begin to throw terms at him that mm -hmm. show that he's either weak or he's, un, or he's incapable of being a man. We, we, we call him words that literally feminize him. Oh, you're being soft. Uh, you're being yeah. soft. Yeah. You're being a puss. You, yeah. You're doing things, yeah. right? So the man has to always try to find a way to balance who he is in order to uh, maintain reflecting what manhood is supposed to look like. But he also has to do that silently. Mm -hmm. okay. And so he has to continue have to wrestle through all of these social notions of what he's supposed to be as a man mm -hmm. and figure that figure out what that is for himself all while projecting being a man and dealing with internal right. situations that he's facing. Gotcha. Now, if we had eight million Adrians out there in the world, this would be a, a pretty picture. But Adrian, I'm, I'm going to keep it real for a second, all right? Because I, I'm talking about the things that women complain about. Mm -hmm. You just gave me something solid. If you know that, and if you know that men go through these things, why then do you guys, and, and not you, just in general, men, mm -hmm. uh, why do you call women crazy when they come with similar baggage, right? And project certain feelings or emotions on you. You um, men don't step back and say, you know what? I know what she means. I know what she may have gone through. I know what this is like. Instead, she's crazy. You, you know, she, she's, she's loose, she's wild. Uh -uh, I want no parts of that, too much drama. And then you keep it moving. Why? For two, for, for, for two reasons. So mm -hmm. this is what happens, right? When a, when a young lady is growing up, by by her ability or the permission to emote mm -hmm. it also comes with with support and language around her emotions she's allowed to communicate about her emotions she's allowed to share about it so we begin to learn how she feels and and the proper language to use around that okay now if you tell a young boy well don't cry boys aren't supposed to cry you begin to shut down his ability to express emotions if he cannot express emotions, then you cannot attach the language that goes with expressing emotions around it. So you now have a young man who, who grows up not knowing how to communicate his feelings mm -hmm. or his emotions. Mm -hmm. And if you're dealing with somebody who's, who's not communicative in that way, well, he's gonna mirror, he's gonna want a mirror reflection of that. He can only now deal with so much of her communicating about her emotions because the idea of communicating and, and projecting is limited for him. Mm, okay, I, I get that, I get that. I just wish that life would be this pretty and everything would come together. Listen, <laughs> Adrian just dropped some hard gems, okay? That's gonna lead us right into episode two of season two, where we start cranking it up, right? We start asking the raw question. Listen, go to IGTV, YouTube. You can find us there. Tune in to episode two. It's your favorite blogger and only crazy coach, Tony. Peace.